This is going to be a slightly different uh, scenic ride video because I shot this just yesterday on Monday cutting across half of Manhattan or even more than half on my kick scooter. So this is not the Brompton, this is my Zooter scooter. And if you if you don't know what the Zooter is, you can scroll down there is a link to my shop page from there you can click on scooters and this is the one I'm talking about and you can check them out right here they cost about three hundred dollars some of them as much as four hundred and the model I have they no longer even sell it's a bit like this but it has a more aerodynamic kind of a, a cutout it was around 220 when I bought it 18 years ago now it's 400 so back to the ride I started at the tip of Manhattan which is Marble Hill this place Marble Hill is actually a part of Manhattan and it was a part of Manhattan Island this creek went around these streets something like this and the government artificially cut across to make it easier for shipping and this precious marble which uh, this hill used to be full of had been mined away and taken into federal buildings so that's what the federal that's how they operate as far as New York is concerned they have little care for the environment or the people whatever this was a 10 mile long ride it even though Google says that you could walk this in three and a half hours it took me almost as long it took me three hours of casual riding granted I was not in a hurry I probably could crank it out in two hours if I wanted to but um, I did not want to break a sweat so I just came down this way and I'll show you in the video I was surprised to see how solid the, the Google footage was the image stabilization in the GoPro is, is excellent. So I went here to the dental office and then with my freshly cleaned teeth I started shopping for food at Grand Central. I went up to the Upper East Side and uh, got some dessert as well. Here is Marble Hill train station and if you look carefully you can see that this is an artificially cut waterway you can see on the rocks and even more so as you look at the back of the station you can see the, the sign marble hill and you can see that this is all machined down rock this is not natural at all a very charming hill other otherwise Even with all the marble removed, this is still a steep hill. And you don't want to take it up. Uh, it's easier to do downhill. And this was the beginning of my trip. This is what the bridge looks like. This is the bridge that connects Marble Hill to the rest of Manhattan. With this artificially cut river which they built because of the shipping. It's simply more efficient to cut across like that. This is my scooter. I have a couple of bags with me and a handlebar bag as well. You see the, uh, the deck which is a kind of a lightweight aerodynamic um, deck. And the ones past the bridge, I am on Broadway this is not the most charming neighborhood of Manhattan. It's full of industrial installations, low-income housing, but also history. The areas west of Broadway were actually very prosperous farms. And about a hundred years ago, there was ev even a Packard, Packard uh, dealership south of Dietman Street. Packard used to be something like the American Bentley it was a, a luxury car and that just says a lot about the neighborhood but
but I guess the rich people moved away and a lot of poor people and especially Dominican migrants moved in and a lot of the housing had been downgraded so even some of the middle class people moved away and now it's beginning to gentrify again and you can see that the Zuther moves pretty fast not as fast as a bicycle would especially not like in my electric Brompton but this is pretty decent speed I mean ten and a half miles in th three hours that means I was averaging maybe three and a half hours not as good as I mean three and a half miles per hour not as good as what I do with the bike which is more like 10 miles an hour but I was very casual like I would stop and uh, shoot the video and so on kind of a rocky ride but I really enjoy riding the scooter and it has one huge advantage over the bike and that is that it weighs less than 12 pounds and is very compact it is no drivetrain no chains to worry about no gears it's just a delightful thing to use if you don't need to go far I would say a 10 mile trip is just about sufficient I am getting close to to Dykeman Street this is actually east of Broadway this is not Broadway itself very poor road quality and I ended up jumping on and off the sidewalk depending upon the situation and that's also a really nice advantage of a kick scooter as opposed to a bicycle <coughs> Once you get past Dykeman Street, there is a really steep, short segment, maybe a couple of blocks, maybe a bit more than that, which I just walked. And this is called Fort George Hill. There's no point riding or kicking on, on a steep uphill at least if you don't want to break a sweat if you're exercising it's a great way to go but if you're just traveling from A to B then it's easier to just walk it up and on the top of the hill um, it's mostly downhill or flats and I rode over to Amsterdam Avenue because that's right next to the park I think it's called the East R River Park it's right next to the East River where there is also a highway.
I had to film this building. It's exceptionally ugly. There is nothing beautiful built in this neighborhood at all. Everything nice is old. Once you pass the ugly building, it gets to be pretty nice because you're riding all near the park. So the air quality is better and there are not that many people on the sidewalk. Once again, because I'm not on a bicycle, I don't have to be on the road. If the sidewalk looks better, then I take the sidewalk. And it's amazing how fast the Zooter can go. And I'm actually hitting the brake. This could go even faster. And I never ever push into it when I'm going downhill. Because I'm just so afraid of falling on my face. But it can go really fast. You can get this thing up to close to 15 miles an hour on a downhill if you really want to kick it. Which I did not do. I just, I would just glide down and hit the brakes uh, occasionally. This is all fun from this point on because almost the entire ride all the way to the bottom of Central Park is either in or, or right alongside some kind of a nice green park. And here I come upon the famous Morris Jumel mansion on the right. This is the oldest house in Manhattan and one of the oldest structures in New York City. This was built for a military leader in the British Army prior to 1776 when the British lost the War of Independence they confiscated the house, the US government confiscated the house and some other money people lived here for a while. An interesting aspect of this house is that it is definitely haunted and there are some amazing stories on the internet. There was a group of children who saw a woman dressed in period clothing who yelled at them telling them to stop making noises or go home and they thought that the woman was a, a museum employee. Later on it turned out the museum was closed. There was nobody in it. And the kids recognized the woman from a painting they saw later on inside the, the house. It's a really charming place. Across from the mansion there is this uh, terrace, Sylvan Terrace with apartments which are charming and quite expensive but not as expensive as the Upper West Side or the lower parts of Manhattan. I've never gone in, into the house but I have ridden my bikes around this area many times. This is the north side of the property. It's surrounded by medium high-rise residential buildings. Not a bad area, but there's really no shopping or anything around it. Once you get out of this block, you're basically in a slum. From this point on, it was all downhill all the way to 155th and then it's flat so a really easy ride but there is traffic actually quite a bit of it this was a Monday um, I would say around noon 11 o'clock 1130 something like that
once I passed 155 I was back on St. Nicholas this is generally a poor neighborhood but so many charming old buildings a lot of British architecture some Dutch here and there and there's also some actually quite a bit of generic stuff from the early part of the 20th century this is definitely pre-war and not a, at least during the daytime not a dangerous place to ride and they have bike lanes almost everywhere in, f in fact once I come across this intersection you'll see that they just put on new new uh, surface on the road they haven't even painted it they haven't put up the markers But this segment was all brand new road, which I really enjoy. So smooth. You just have to watch out for the occasional crazy driver. But for the most part, it's it's not bad. Unfortunately, there is all this double parking going on and you have to really look out for anybody getting out of a car. I had been car doored before and this guy, this is not even double parking, this is more like triple parking. You have to be really careful and this is a downhill. I typically hit the brake which means hitting the tires or the wheels directly in my case you can buy zooters that have a brake in the rear and all of them come with a front brake which is practically useless and it's ugly so I took off mine as soon as I bought it so I, I typically directly brake on the wheel itself just to not to pick up too much speed just in case somebody jumps out or somebody flips a door open but I could have picked up a lot more speed than this and this is just such, such a charming old church this is very close to City College and there is another historic house just like a block or two in the background here is another charming building on the left probably another church this part of Harlem and much of Harlem really has so many nice old pieces of architecture I hope the whole area is going to regentrify like it used to be before the 40s this was actually a pretty upscale place at which to live
This is just below 125th Street. Not an easy intersection to navigate on a bicycle, but when you have a scooter, you just jump onto the sidewalk. The building on the right is a really nice, recently renovated, upscale rental. I think you rent, not buy. I'm not so sure. Looks a bit like a, a Roman building. Not that crafty, but very solid building construction. Very good quality. And this is, I'm staying on the sidewalk because there is another nasty intersection coming up. And then there is this really nice wide boulevard that goes very close to Central Park. This is another difficult intersection at the 121st. I got a $200 bicycle ticket here last year for stopping at the red light, but once the cars were gone, I started trickling through maybe five seconds before it turned green. So that was $200. This is a really charming wide boulevard, but it's mostly just poor people. They should pull at least half the poor people out to some other cheaper neighborhood and bring in some more money professionals because if they added restaurants and, and shops, this would be a really beautiful. This building here on the right is one of the most beautiful buildings in Harlem. And even the one next to it is pretty good. But on the left in the corner, they just built this horrific monstrosity, in which is totally clashing with every traditional building in the neighborhood. Absolutely no taste. This is the last stretch to Central Park North on what is really 7th Avenue. And the driving and the riding is not very safe. Once again there is double parking, triple parking, parking on the bike lane. This is so dangerous. You don't want to squeeze in them between the two cars, I, I'd rather just go around. And this was really a sunny hot day and with my scooter I can jump onto the sidewalk on the shady side. Something I could not do on the bicycle. So I never get burnt when I scoot. Not in the city anyway. And I only scoot in urban areas. And this is Central Park North. This area has gentrified over the last couple of decades. 
but because of the lockdown I'm not sure if that's going to stay or if it's just going to freeze they also built some new buildings here and this area is not cheap but it's just not as nice as, as the areas further south I could have gone right into Central Park but that's a very steep uphill and then it ends up with a steep downhill and it's just easier to go around that hill Central Park North and Central Park West this is the northwest corner of Central Park with some of the ugliest buildings in the area except for that new building that they put up there in the northeast corner which is sort of okay, not beautiful, but okay. The rest of them looks horrible. It, it looks like a jailhouse. Here I'm finally heading south on Central Park West. They only have a northbound bike lane, not a southbound one. So what I'm doing is not entirely legal, but I am just a kick scooter. Here is another landmark building that is a fairly recent renovation. I think it's a rental and it's very spacious, beautiful inside and out, a bit of a French style. This was a rundown place for quite some time, then they fixed it up and now they can rent it for a fortune. Here it's beginning to slope downhill again, which is really nice. And except for a couple of steep uphills inside Central Park, it's all downhill all the way into Midtown.
Here I'm back in Central Park. There was immediately a steep uphill which I walked and then there was this really nice downhill that goes on for a pretty long time. And once again I'm just gliding, I'm not pushing at all. And even this way it's pretty fast. After that steep uphill, I end up on the top of this elevation and this is the biggest downhill slope on the west side of the park. I do hit the brake a little bit just because of caution. You never know when somebody's going to jump out with a dog or a stroller. But I do pick up pretty decent speed especially toward this, the bottom, that's when I stop uh, touching the wheel and I just let the scooter accelerate as much as it wants to trying to build the momentum because there is another uphill Here I begin to descend again, but instead of staying on the main road, I go into the Great Lawn, mostly to use the facilities, not so much for getting to, getting to Midtown any faster. This is kind of a side tour, and uh, I don't think it's legal to go in there with a bicycle or even a kick scooter, but who cares? I, I'm I wasn't uh, getting close to anybody and uh, I have teeny tiny 18 inch wheels so nobody really cared. This is all downhill and not too steep and very very smooth pavement so I always enjoy gliding down on the scooter <coughs> in this area. This is Shakespeare's garden on the left. It's really nicely maintained, like a botanical garden. It has a little bit of wildlife in it as well. Not like uh, upstate, but uh, they do have some birds. And here is where I return to the main road, which is going to lead to Strawberry Field.
There is a lake just across from Strawberry Field. It is actually called the lake. That's it. After Strawberry Fields, uh, there is a steep uphill and I had to walk the scooter. But once you're at the top, <coughs> there's a long downhill that goes past uh, Sheep's Meadow on the left. And you end up at the bottom of Central Park. You can already see the buildings uh, of Central Park South in the background. Interestingly enough, these electric scooters were not much faster than I was. In some cases I was even faster, although eventually they do catch up at the bottom of the slope. The fact is, tiny wheels accelerate really fast at lower speeds, like up to 5-6 uh, miles an hour. And I'm taking a short break just before exiting the park on 7th Avenue. This building on the southeast corner of 58th and 7th is such a charming, intricate building. It looks different from any of the others. This was one of the first um, buildings in Manhattan that was trying to convince wealthy people to live in apartments because apartment living up until the 19th century was for the poor and the middle class and not it was not commonly for wealthy people but these these buildings also the one on the right side they were built with the maids quarters and the, all the amenities you can imagine to attract wealthy people to to buy or rent real estate in the middle of the city This was mostly downhill all the way to 42nd Street, but this is so busy, you have to be really careful. This is Midtown. This is as busy as it gets, as far as New York is concerned. This is not entirely legal, but I did take a chance. This is 
already Times Square and I'm almost uh, at 42nd Street getting pretty exhausted at this point the temperatures were close to 90 degrees and sunny This is 42nd Street and I am just a couple of blocks away from Lady M, the cake shop that is the, really the goal of this ride. This is 41st Street, right next to Bryant Park, which is on the left, or th to the north of the street. And Lady M, at least this branch, survived um, the lockdown. My last job prior to the lockdown was just a couple of blocks away from here, so we would periodically spend company budget on ordering cakes from them <coughs> their cakes are not cheap but they are some of the best lady m is a japanese uh, chain i think they have expanded beyond new york they started out in madison avenue i think in the 90s and then they were successful and then they started opening stores all over the place and so there is one shop here but the first and original store was and still is on East 78th Street east of uh, Madison Avenue. So I checked out the cakes but decided to get something savory from Central Park and then ride up inside the park to visit the original shop and to get my cake from them. I went into Bryant Park to look around a little bit it was almost as busy as it used to be before the lockdown. It seems like life is back to normal. Although I the city just does not feel the same. But there were plenty of people, no question. And this is a weekday, early afternoon, like, like just after lunchtime or around lunchtime. And after Bryant Park and shopping at Grand Central at the market, I went up to the Upper East Side and I got a piece of tiramisu, which tasted absolutely wonderful. It's a, a good number of crepes sandwiched into pastry cream and chocolate and coffee. And here is the Lady M website. The cake that I got was this one, the tiramisu. So I think it is a, a new creation, or at least it hasn't been around for a while. If you just want the slice, that's eleven dollars. But a full cake costs over a hundred. And I think this is these are layers of pastry cream and chocolate, and in the center they put the coffee.
Some years ago, a delivery man working for Lady M was arrested because he spent months after month uh, stealing cakes, and it took them a while to discover it. But apparently, he stole tens of thousands of dollars of worth of cakes, and I think he sold them off in secret. This this was the original cake, or close to it, without the passion fruit. Most of what they have is really good. So this is it for this video. I ended up eating way more than the calories I burnt, even though I was out there all day. Like it was literally getting dark when I got home. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.